Hi folks, Gavin here from Player TV, and today I'm going to be taking a look at an overclocking focused motherboard on the Intel Z270 chipset. This is the Asus Republic of Gamers Maximus 9 Apex. Now the Apex is obviously focused towards high-end overclocking. It's got a lot of sub-zero overclocking features. It's also geared towards the enthusiast and those who want to make the most of their components performance. Now, touching on some of the specs, um, some of the compatibility and the features, it's got support for Intel's KB Lake 7th generation processors and Intel's Skylake 6th generation processor. So that's the i3, the i5 and the i7 chips. Touching on some of the, you know, some of the features, it is obviously an overclocking focused motherboard, as you can tell. Um, it's gone away, this is an ATX size motherboard, but it's gone away from the traditional four slim, four slot DIMM to a two slot DIMM. Now this is for improved memory performance, increased memory, improved, not increased, improved memory latency, and obviously, you know, memory clocking can, memory can be the difference between a world record score and being second. So obviously, everything about this board is geared towards the enthusiast. It's got dual channel DDR4 memory support for DDR4, obviously. Um, it supports memory up to 4,266 megahertz. So it's very, very focused on memory overclocking as well as CPU overclocking. Um, you can put 32 gig of memory into this board. It will obviously only support 32 gig because, you know, it is a two dim slot board and not four dim like a traditional ATX board, like I've mentioned. So, one of the other features as well, which is and every other um, Intel Z270 board doesn't feature, which the Apex does, it has a DIMM.2 port. Now this slot is um, for a dual M.2 expansion card that comes with the Apex. You can run M.2, two M.2s in RAID 0 without any bottlenecking from the chipset, any performance because it comes straight from the memory slot itself. So the bandwidth problem is eliminated. So you should get maximum speeds on NMVE SSDs and obviously the hot, the top tamale of drives. It's got four SATA 6 gig, um, six gig a second ports. Um, so it's SATA 3 ports, so four of them. They support RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5 and RAID 10 arrays. They've also got a unique PCB as you can see. It's got a cutout on the bottom. Now this is what, and obviously it's got a cutout up here for the memory. What this is designed for is to allow the RGB ROG Aura Sync lighting to not only shine through um, more, but it obviously looks more predominant in a system. So if you're looking to buy this particular board for a regular system, put it inside your case, you know, it's geared towards looking good as well as performing well. It's got a unique PCB design, as I've just mentioned. Um, it's got ROG water cooling zone. So it's got a zone specifically for water coolers. Um, so you've got like some of the like a pump header. You've got a, you know fan header for the pump as well. So it's you know it's geared towards enthusiasts. As I mentioned, it is a board primarily focused towards overclockers and enthusiasts. But people who are looking for a budget board and something that's just going to be a daily driver for someone, this isn't the board that you're looking for. To be honest, it hasn't got built-in Wi-Fi like a traditional motherboard at the top end of the Z1 the Z270 platform. But you know. It is what it is. Overclockers don't generally use Wi-Fi um, at the top level. Touching on PCI ports, it's got two PCI x 16 Gen 3 and it's got one PCI x 16 Gen 2. So it does have three PCI 16, PCI Express x 16 lanes for graphics cards. It also has two PCI 1 um, times, times 1 Gen 3 ports as well, which, you know, is, it's a... It's really good in my opinion. Um, touching on the rear I.O. of the Apex, it's got two PS2 ports, which I love to see. It's got a purple one for keyboard, a green one for the mice, or well, for your mouse, should I say. It's got one display port, one HDMI port, one um, RJ45 Ethernet port, two USB 3.1 Type-A and Type-C ports, six USB 3 ports, one optical speed if out, one clear CMOS button, one USB you, you US buy, USB BIOS flashback button, and it's got five gold-plated audio jacks for the ROG Supreme FX onboard audio, which like the top-end Asus boards, this does have, obviously, the upgraded um, ALC1120 um, audio chip. 
This particular board retails for around £275, so it is, you know, considered to be a top-end board. Obviously, there are a lot more boards more expensive than the ROG Formula, uh, Maximus 9 Formula, should I say, and the Code are more expensive than this board. But obviously, this board has been cut down. It's had all the unnecessary features swiped away, and it is primarily focused for overclockers. I have to, I have to exclamation point that, Mark exclamation mark at that point should I say it's an overclocking focus board so yeah I think it's time to see how the ROG Maximus 9 Apex performs especially against other boards on the chipset and then we'll talk more about you know the overclocking aspect of it after obviously the benchmarks roll the benchmarks <laughs> So obviously some of the primary overclocking features that this board, you know, features what most boards don't. It has an LN2 mode switch. Now what this switch initially does is it disables what we call in the extreme overclocking world called a cold bug. Now what a cold bug does is where the system is too cold to operate, it'll just shut down and everything will go off. That is bad when overclocking for obvious reasons. It allows, or should I say, it doesn't allow for what we call full pot benchmarking full pot is basically when you're pouring LN2 into the pot without caring the world for temps. Um, now this board obviously has a switch which will disable or what should I say will increase certain voltages like specifically um, the internal PLL voltage. Now this voltage allows the board obviously to, to, to bypass this bug and it does allow for full pot benching. So this board is geared as I've mentioned 150 times now for sub-zero overclocking, it's the perfect board for that. Obviously, it has other features. It comes with different software features, which Republica Gamers, Asus, um, ROG, um, whatever you like to know them, whatever you call them, like some ROG RAM Cache 2. It has um, clone drive, memory. it has a memory OK button. It has slow mode, and um, for, you know, it's good for XTU competitive benchmarking. It's got a CMS button, Overwolf, a retry button, safe boot button, a start button, a reset button, Obviously, Island 2 mode, which I've just talked about. It's got ROG Aura, RGB lighting, because everyone loves RGB, don't they? Um, it's got control. It's got RGB Aura strip header, so it's got two of these. So you can plug in, you know, you can make this look as pretty as the rest of the Maximus 9 ROG range in your system. It's got um, NextFet Power Block MOSFET. So it's got the next generation and high performance MOSFETs for, you know, extreme overclocking. It um, also supports, you know, Asus ROG Mem Tweak it for improved memory and um, performance. But yeah, um, in terms of overclocking my, myself, it has obviously pre predefined profiles, the likes of top overclockers, such as um, Roman Hartung or DeBauer. Um, you know, it has different memory profiles as well. So you can literally, you know, start off with a high setting and then you can tweak it to, you know, your specific um, compatibility of your hardware because you're in extreme overclocking you've probably binned your hardware you know what it's capable of um, the apex isn't gonna you know bottleneck that if anything it's probably gonna get make the most of your memory um, as well as obviously your CPU now in terms of my personal overclocking um, exploits for this board um, I managed to achieve a stable clock on air of um, 5.2 gigahertz at 1.408 volts so as you can see in the CPU here, um, I did manage to achieve that. Now this was stable. This was with obviously with four cores, eight, eight threads, so hyper threading was enabled. I did um, I did manage to get 5.3 gigahertz out of this particular board in my chip um, at, at the same voltage 1.408, but it was unstable. So yeah, in terms of memory overclocking, I 
like to compare this against the mat, the um, the board on my shelf, the Z270X Power Gaming Titanium from MSI. Um, now I'm going to make a pretty bold claim here. Um, I managed to overclock the memory much better on this board than I did on the um, MSI board. Now that's to be expected because it's a two dim against a four dim design. Um, the memory tracks are short to the CPU, so the latency is lower, as you could see in the benchmarks. And in terms of performance, it performs no worse, in fact, better in some areas, especially memory performance, than the rest of the ATX um, motherboards from, on the Z270 that we've tested from all different manufacturers, Asus, MSI, rah, rah, rah. Um, so the Apex isn't just a high-performing board for extreme overclockers, it's a high-performing board for the general user, the enthusiast. Now, as I've mentioned, it's an expensive board for what it is. Well, I'll rephrase that a bit, I should I say. It's not an expensive board for what it is for an extreme overclocker. That's kind of what was expected, you know, between 270 and 300. This board has world records galore, you know, 7.3 gigahertz, you know, on liquid helium. It's the top performing board on hardware, but for liquid nitrogen currently on the Intel Z270 chipset. And the price wise, it's great. If you're a general user and you're looking at this board, you probably could be better off with the likes of the Hero that we've tested. The Hero performs pretty much similar. It doesn't perform as well on memory, but it's not. It's negligible. Um, you're not really going to notice much difference um, between that. Extreme overclockers pushing it to the highest limit will. General gamers and con enthusiasts and consumers will not. So if you're an overclocker, you're looking for the best Intel Z270 board for your Skylake or Kaby Lake chip, and you want to make the most of your DDR4 memory, then this is the board, the Maximus 9 Apex, is a winner. Um, I was going to award this board our gold award, but because it is the best in class for, as I've just said, Z270's Intel's chipset, it's a platinum award from us, uh, well, should I say from me. This is my board of choice for Sub-Zero Overclock, I and mean, then you're going to see some big LN2 scores on this board. Uh, especially if you follow me, Gav Bond on hardware bot on overclocking. It's the best overclocking board. It's achieved the best results in my from my chip, even at air. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's it is the dog of bollocks. Um, I'd like to thank Asus for sending this board in um, for review, and obviously um, let me put it on liquid nitrogen. That's going to be fun. Um, obviously, if you're not. Um, a sub-zero overclocker and you're not too bothered about you know paying 270 to 300 pounds for performance get the hero and um, hero is an absolutely brilliant board and it will serve you well this board looks great performs great it's platinum award winning um uh, so end of the video please hit the subscribe button please check out our other z270 motherboard reviews um and yeah this is the first video of the new setup and new office and I have been Gavin from Play TV, as you can probably tell. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Check out, check me out on my next video. Um, thanks for watching, and ciao for now.